Welcome friends to the channel Anthropology Think Tank for CSE. Today we will be dealing with the lecture 4. We will be covering the unit 1.4 that is a topic on biological and cultural factors in the human evolution. So first taking up a definition on evolution. So Darwin also a naturalist gives an anatomy based definition. He says that evolution is descent with modification. That is, the species change over the time from the share, shared common ancestor. So what it means is descent with modification. So like uh, descent means the next generation. Like this is the grandfather. Then this is father of the person and this is the ego so this is the line of descent so if this person is different from his father then ego is different from his father so there is a modification in the anatomy and this descent with modification in every lineage leads to evolution for example if this is australopithecus right and this is your habilis, right? And this is your erectus. So they are different in their anatomy. That is in their bone structure, in their uh, hand bone structure, in their leg bone structure, in their cranial bone structure. So this way their anatomy is different. So this is descent with modification and population genetics define evolution in terms of change in frequencies of the alleles in a population's gene pool from one generation to next so let's say this is a gene pool population it has people with a blood group right a a b B. Then in the next generation, let's say due to some reasons, the A gene is lost and only B blood group gene remain. So this B allele will keep the population having B blood group. So this population has evolved in the terms of the blood group that earlier both A allele and B allele were present, but now only B allele is present. So this has undergone a evolution. Now we'll study with the biocultural factors. So how this comes into existence. So as we have already seen in the previous lectures that Sherwood Washburn gave the concept of new physical anthropology. So he studied the processes of evolutionary change and he found that the evolution in humans is a biocultural phenomena. So what he says is that due to some ecological and other changes first some biological changes happened in humans and these biological changes were responsible for the starting of the culture and as the culture becomes advantageous for the survival of our ancestors then the natural selection favored the gene responsible for such behavior right so let so it, it simply means that there were some traits right let's say a population is living in a equatorial area so let's say if there is a fair person there right and one is a dark person there so in the equatorial area there is lot of sunlight right so the fair person will have skin burns and all different kind of problem because of excess penetration of sunlight into skin and may lead to skin cancer etc. So this fair population have a greater chance of elimination in that environment with higher sunlight. That is natural selection has eliminated this fairer population in the equatorial area and similarly it will happen for the darker people in the tropic in the uh, frigid area that is arctic area where there is lesser sunlight because then sunlight cannot penetrate their skin right so natural selection favors certain biological genes right 
so what he says is because of biology and culture there is a acceleration of human evolution around this period and he gave two important features about this biological evolution he says it is characterized by adaptive radiation and mosaic evolution so what is adaptive radiation adaptive radiation is due to certain ecological changes around this miocene epoch right which is around 10 to 15 million years ago there was a certain climate change there was a very cold and dry environment that led to reduction of tropical forests into savanna as you must have studied in your geography that when there is less water availability so the tropical forest forest cannot grow they need a lot of rain water to grow so this will change from forest to grassland and that means there is a reduced food for apes on the trees now there are trees are not there uh, they have reduced to grassland so what happens now they will start looking for new habitats so the primates moved from arboreal that is from trees to terrestrial that is to the ground and this required biopedalism that is because they need to walk for very long distances for getting food it is not like trees where they can find easily food easily so this led to the emergence of bipedalism and also it is a mosaic evolution so what is mosaic evolution both this adaptive radiation and mosaic we will be covering in detail in the unit 1.4 only in the lecture 6 this is lecture 4 so in lecture 6 we will be dealing in detail about these two also so mosaic evolution means it's the process of natural selection acts differently upon various structures so what it means is our brain can evolve independently of our hands our you know legs can evolve independently of our pelvis so different features are evolving differently at different times so this is mosaic evolution it doesn't mean that if our hands are evolving at the same time our brain has to also evolve they can evolve independently of each other and this is why we see the next slide where we see that the first major change that occurred in humans around 4 million years was about bipedalism and pelvis change it was not the skull change that is the first change it is the bipedalism and pelvis change which is the first change in humans right and what is the evidence for this so evidence is the light only footprints so light only footprints is about period of 3.8 million years ago was about a appearances so these footprints were found in lautoli which says that there was a kind of bipedalism right also raymond died dart found town child which is the a afranicus so a afranicus of Afra africanus the brain is similar to apes but foramen magnum is positioned forward so like this is the human this is chimpanzee and this is human so this is the forum and magnum this is a area from where your nerves from your brain go and connect to your spinal cord so this is backward in chimpanzee whereas it is more centrally located in humans right so it indicated forwarded position of forum and magnum and this is because of bipedalism and also donald johnson found in lucy which is a complete skeleton that the limbs were angled towards knees which bring feet in line with the body's center of gravity and create stability and also he found that the pelvis was broad these features indicate that bipedalism was the first evolutionary change first biological evolutionary change in the humans and it occurred around 4 million years ago then also australopithecus radiated to habilis and habilis evolved into erectus so this happened on the grounds of dietary habits so what is the change australopithecus was specialized in eating small seeds but since we know that humans were evolving larger brain also at the same time and forests were changing into grasslands so a dietary adaptation was needed to satisfy protein requirements in this arid savanna because plants don't give that much of protein 
and this was the beginning of use of very crude tools very crude tools very initial early tools by the homo habilis for the efficient utilization of meat by butchering and also marked a shift to omnivorous diet right so this manufacture of stone tools played a major role now what is happening if your stone tools are good right you can butcher more you can have more meat from the food and this will increase your chances of survival so groups with better tool will survive so the natural selection will choose group with better tools and this will in itself lead to evolution of human brains with higher cranial capacities because only brains with higher cranial capacities can develop better tools so this way this feedback system is working that better tools lead to more human capacities more human capacities lead to better tools and this way the diet was improving so what happens next is habilis that is a tool maker comes around 2.5 million years ago had evolved a larger brain average of 600 cc whereas australopithecus is around 450 to 500 average cc right which is not very different from apes so and also this habilis had a higher developed frontal lobe that indicates higher mental capacities to learn and that is why it became the first tool maker also at the same time this sr gap to gene doubled in the humans and what does this do is it leads to more rapid convolutions of the frontal cortex that is it gives more surface area because of more wrinkles in the cortex so this is why human brains start evolving faster during this particular period due to this sr gap to gene then finally comes the homo erectus in homo erectus we finally find that bipedalism is fully developed they had the ability to use fires and they had much more complex tools than homo habilis and all these changes made it possible for homo ergaster to leave africa and spread throughout africa asia and europe between 1.8 million years ago right so this is the chronology now we will see the biological factors in detail so the first is the factor of bipedalism as we have already discussed so what is bipedalism require if you try to stand in a one feet, you will find it difficult to balance your body. So bipedalism, the first change it will need is better balance for center of gravity, right? So what will it need? It will need that shift of foramen magnum, right? This you see. So this is important. Then next is skull is well balanced on the first vertebra of the col vertebral column, right? And next is the development of four alternate curves cervical, thoracic, lumbar, and sacral, giving the S shaped vertebral column, whereas chimpanzees have C shaped vertebral column. They don't have cervical and lumbar, they only developed in humans during the childhood. And as a result, the weight of the head and the trunk falls clearly on the pelvis in a straight line. And the next is thorax, which is having more transversal development than the dorsal ventral and that helps in keeping center of gravity body backwards towards the spine so let's see the figure so this is what i am trying to say this is a shaped spine right so this is not present in ape this is not this lumbar region is not present this lumbar region is not present in the ape this cervical region is also not present only these is this is c shaped kind of there and this is s shaped so the the, the weight is falling directly on the pelvis right whereas in apes this is not directly falling so this weight is not falling directly weight is not like this center of gravity is like this it is falling downside and that is why this thorax is also pulled outside if you if you stand like if you try to stand like this chimpanzee you will feel like your weight is falling through your chest and not through your pelvis like this whereas in humans the weight is falling like this towards your pelvis Right, so now you can understand the balance of gravity, and this is happening because of development of these, this area, this lumbar, re this lumbar region, and this cervical region, and this, this is the first vertebrae, right? So this first vertebrae, and this is your foramen magnum, this is your foramen magnum coming directly from your skull to this first vertebrae, right? So it's clear. So now moving to the next slide. So the next evolution is about this femur bone. So what is the femur does 
so this as we have already seen the weight comes like this to the pelvis and now pelvis will also transmit it to the ground right so it happens to the femur now pelvis will interact with femur this bone and will transmit weight to the ground so this is humans and gorilla is different because gorilla is not standing on the bipedalism continuously but humans are so human femur bone has to be very strong to handle this and that is why it has a highly developed linear aspera which is a rich kind of structure behind this femur bone so it's very strong in humans also femur is much larger because it has to carry much more weight it cannot be like other primates so it's much larger let us see this structure this is like this is very small femur and if you see this is this is very big this is this length is very big and also this angle of femur this this is the angle so this angle is much more let me clear it once more then it will be better so so this angle if you see so this angle is see this angle this is 90 degree angle right and this is like 120 degree angle this angle is more and this is like perpendicular this is 90 degree and this is 120 so this angle is more right and this pelvis has come to the front side and in gorilla it is more on the side of see this is like side and this is more on the front it is coming to the front side right and the next is about how this knock knee posture see this gorilla legs are like this they are straight whereas in humans this is like a knock knee they are coming closer together so this this is your center of gravity right so this is your center of gravity is very close to your knees so this makes it possible to carry more weight on the knees whereas in this particular the weight is falling like this so gorilla have no nothing to handle this weight whereas humans have this knee structure to handle the center of gravity so the body has become more and more linear if you understand right then the next is about remodeling of brain or encephalization so what does this mean this means humans have a larger brain size relative to the body it's not only brain size elephants have bigger brains than us so it is about being how it is relative to our body and also smaller face than brain right so remember these two points we'll be discussing on the next slide with the help of figure also and now what is the issue the issue is when the brain size develops it will require larger pelvis for the childbirth right but there is also issue if there is a large pelvis then bipedalism will be, become difficult like we have already seen if the knees are far apart then it cannot transmit weight vertically downside so pelvis cannot be too wide also so that is why there is a balance needed for bipedalism where you have to have a balance between the size of the brain of human and the bipedalism so pelvis also adjusted in that particular manner right so brain underwent changes to the size so how does this happen because we need bigger brain but we cannot have a brain size of too large brain size so what happened was convoluted cerebral cortex appeared like this is your brain so your brain is like this lot of wiring is going on this lot of wiring lot of convolutions is going so it has more and more more and more surface area to fit inside relatively smaller cranium so your brain capacity is good because it has high surface area for neurons but it is fit inside a very small cranium and what is responsible so these two genes mcph1 and aspm these two genes were responsible for increasing the brain size now what is the next point next point is humans have the largest frontal lobes what is frontal lobes responsible for frontal lobe is the logical seat of humans humans are highly logical no animal is more logical than humans that is a simple funda right and also there was development of new regions like broca and vernic area which are responsible for your speech and communication so let's see this in the figure so see how human brain is much more bigger than chimpanzees brain see how small this brain is and this you see this is vertical right and this is flat right so this is how you have to see so the brain size is very big in humans and it's very small in apes right and also i am telling you one more point because i have not added this figure later so this human face is perpendicular this is orthognathus right this is orthognathy whereas if you see chimpanzee 
this joy is projecting outside so this is prognathism this joy is coming outside whereas in human this is perpendicular completely right so next is about vernic area and broca area so these two areas were the more development right so this is how we see brain size increase then development of broca and vernic area and this figure shows that how human brain was not evolving in this period much but only after this 2 million see this how much rapidly the brain is increasing in, after this 2 million years ago whereas bipedalism appeared somewhere here itself around 4 million years ago so this much time was lagging between the development of bipedalism and the development of brain so this shows the mosaic evolution then this is i am telling you just for understanding not for writing in the answer the other slides can be written directly in the answer so what does this figure shows this figure shows this is your your brain has three parts right the cerebrum there is cerebellum and there is medulla oblongata so this is your cerebellum this is responsible for your locomotion and other things and this is your prime this is your cerebrum right so cerebrum has this cerebral cortex area which is the top area of the brain and this has lobes which are wrinkled see this frontal lobe this is the parietal lobe this is temporal lobe and this is occipital lobe so these are different functions of different lobes frontal lobe is for decision making temporal lobe is for languages parietal lobe is for sensory perception touch and other things and occipital is your primary vision that is it's located in the back side of your brain if you remember your 10th class so this lens diagram where we see this how eyes have myopia and so this image is formed on the back side of our reti retina so this retina is in the back side of our skin near your occipital lobe so this is how you see and if you remember that diagram now the rays will come and this screen this image is formed on the back side of the screen but due to this lens this will show a correction and your image will be formed on this retina itself right so this is how you see the development of brain then the next is how the remodeling of jaw and teeth take place now if you see human anatomy this is your face and this is your brain area so since your brain is increasing your face has to become short right because your baby cannot be delivered otherwise so if face is becoming short what will happen if face is becoming short obviously our teeth have to become small our jaws have to become small and also this is because of diet which is cooked food is there so we don't have to chew much so teeth will automatically become smaller also since we don't have to bite off so our canines and incisors will also go small so we have smaller canines and small incisors compared to chimpanzee see this this is big canine this is incisor so huge our scanning the incisor so small and also if you see humans have this palate is arched to fit in the mouth in a perfect way while taking less space whereas chimpanzee has this dental arcade like this because it has a lot of space in the mouth because it has a face which is bigger than its brain whereas in humans our face is much more sm smaller than our brain right so that is why it happens on orthogonality we have already discussed that is how the face was projecting outside in the chimpanzees right and diastema is this gap if you see there is a gap in this because of this canine so it cannot close its mouth completely because of this big canine whereas in humans it is not there this gap is not there so the next is the changes in the pelvis so as we have already discussed that pelvis has to you know carry the weight also and also the baby has to be delivered so it cannot increase too much you know otherwise it cannot maintain bipedalism and also humans have increased brain size so it has to balance two things bipedalism where it cannot grow too big otherwise it cannot transmit weight vertically downside and also it has to accommodate for the brain size so how does it happens so if you see humans have much more broad and shallow pelvis right it has a bowl shaped pelvis and it has a pelvic blade which is front to back right and it has ischium which is flat and large gluteus maximus so remember these five points we'll be dealing them in the next slide in the form of diagram so see this diagram 
if you see this is a kind of a bowel shape right this is to support our organs right and if you see this carefully this has a outside if you see our fans table fans their wings are not you know their wings are like they have a curved kind of thing so this is fanning outside like a fan right this ilium right so this is your fanning of your ilium right see see this how this is fanning outside right and this is to this chimpanzee's pelvis is too long right whereas humans it is broad and it is shallow this is length is shallow this is much more shallow than this and it is much broader than this chimpanzee's pelvis right and this sacrum is too long whereas in humans the sacrum is too small and this ischium tuberosity the play the bone where we sit the when the, the our hips touch the chair so this has become much more reduced and that is why we find it difficult to sit uh, easier to sit when compared to chimpanzees they cannot sit like us because they have this tuberosity is very prominent in them right so this is it and this is the fanning of this iliac bone now the next is difference in the hand structure so humans have see this is a curvature is much reduced this has much more curvature and if you have much curve then they have curvature because they have to grasp branches so they have to fold their wrists like this and and they have curved phalanges whereas in humans this phalanges are straight because they have come to ground so they don't need this grasping kind of fingers or phalanges right so we have reduced curvature that leads to power grip see this is how you have this power grip and this is how your precision grip because of this opposable thumb which the animals don't have so this has led to making of tools possible for us like see this is how you make the tools this is how you hit the uh, hammer to make tools because of this power grip and because of precision grip you can hand hold on the things right and the next is the reduced sexual dimorphism so what does sexual dimorphism means it means that females and males of the species are different in terms of weight weapon size like gorilla women and men are very female and uh, gorilla male are very different also if you see peacock male and female they don't the peacock the male peacock has uh, very colorful feathers which the female uh, peacock is lacking right so due to this sexual dimorphism there is a very high male male competition for mating right so in humans this dimorphism has reduced and that is why cooperative groups can come into existence and this led to marriage and family in humans because in chimpanzee for example there is an adult male it will fight with its father with its brother and everyone for having mating opportunities with the females and that is why it's not possible to have family on these things in chimpanzees and other primates so this is completion of our biological evolution with the six points then we come to cultural factors of tool making so as we have seen already tool maker habilis was the first tool maker right and tool making made it easier to cook the food with fire and this led to reduce jaw size right and natural selection promoted more brain development for better tools this we have already developed and discussed in the chronology slide right and then now clothing and shelter so what does clothing and shelter had because of clothing we had a loss of hairs because we did not need hairs to protect ourselves from the cold then the next is the development of language we have already seen how the broca and vernix area were developed and why they developed language because it made cooperation and hunting possible and that made our survival possible because it became easier to hunt because of this language cooperation and as a result natural selection chose the groups which had higher brain and language development right so what does this mean when a group goes for hunting if they had good development of language they could easily cooperate with each other right and that is why they could survive and this made their next generation more possible so natural selection had made it possible then because of art and religion is the next cultural factor so they had better tools like burens we'll be discussing into the paleolithic art and they had language so this led to development of art and painting now what happened because of this now they can make paintings of hunting and can teach their children how to hunt this made their survival easier 
to do right so future generations could learn faster and became well adapted so again natural selection made it possible right and culture family we have already seen because of prolonged infancy as the brain development is too much it takes a lot of time so infancy is prolonged and this needs culture for a uh, family to happen and the last one is about agricultural development so what happened is after neolithic the fresh milk became available as nutritious food so natural selection will favor the people who are able to digest it and if they cannot digest it it led to celiac disease so it's a kind of ep epidemiological transition which we'll be dealing with in the unit 9.8 in detail you just remember this point and make this diagram right and next is thrifty genotype so what is thrifty genotype so thrifty genotype is an in, in, uh, interesting concept it is in the paleolithic it is very important because in the paleolithic period man did not have a certain food availability so it allowed people to efficiently collect and process food and had fat deposited in the period when they had food abundance like today if i have a lot of food available with me i will eat it and my body will store it in the form of fat right and i may use it when there is no food for me right but what happened in the later that is period like now like we have a lot of food availability now so if we eat it it keeps getting deposited in our body and we become fatty leads to obesity and ultimately to diabetes so the environmental change with no so this result of mismatch between the environment in which the brain evolved and the environment of today right and the last one is new tools in agriculture so as new tools came and agriculture became possible like harvester was there coins were there so all this made agriculture possible but because of this what happened because of agriculture there was a lot of mosquitoes and malarial, malarial microorganisms and they were transmitting mosquitoes uh, this mosquito were transmitting malaria to the people as a result what happened natural selection started favoring sickle cell trait in africa and other regions and that is why we see presence of sickle cell anemia so these three things are due to agriculture and can be seen as epidemiological transition which will be dealing in detail with unit 9.8 right and next is a very good diagram for you you can make this diagram and understand how everything is working in a feedback mechanism this is how hand grip change will improve your tool making tool making making neolithic agriculture possible thrifty genotype and epidemiological transition bipedalism leading to tool making because of the freeing of hands then it was also responsible for brain size increase then it's also responsible for change in pelvis and increase in brain size was interacting with change in pelvis then this increased brain size was responsible of prolonged infancy which led to family and marriage also it is due to sexual dimorphism right and tool making led to hunting cooking which reduced joint teeth and it was also because of increase in brain size that the joint teeth reduced right and tool making led to language increased brain size also lead to language and language made it also possible to have family and marriage because of cooperation and hunting so this is how you can see this entire video in this particular slide and this is a very important diagram so thank you friends in the next slide we'll be taking up theories of evolution lamarckism darwinism and the post darwinism and finally culminating into synthetic theory of evolution thank you friends